how can you prepare in a certain way for that unexpected in you know with these two hurricanes that came recently to hit the united states and we have listeners in the Caribbean, listeners in other places where these hurricanes came and happened and what well, we are now getting into the winter so the blizzards will come given that the blizzards are kinder than the hurricanes apparently but but they will come and how are you going to be Welcome to Cross Platform Podcast, where we discuss how to solve productivity problems across platforms. I'm Augusto Pinot. And I'm Mark Gelwix. And this week we are going to talk about preparedness, being ready for disasters or events or things. What happened with the unexpected? And how can you prepare in a certain way for that unexpected? In you know, with these two hurricanes that came recently to hit the United States. And we have listeners in the Caribbean, listeners in other places where these hurricanes came and happened. And what well, we are now getting into the winter. So the blizzards will come, given that the blizzards are kinder than the hurricanes, apparently. But, but they will come. And how are you going to be prepared for all that? So that's our topic for today. Yeah, we we've talked about this in the past, and I don't think there's enough times that we can talk about this because you never know when this stuff's going to happen. Uh, at any time, you can wind up with a natural disaster. You can wind up with an artificially created disaster and being prepared at the most basic level, but also just thinking about immediate preparedness. Now, Keep in mind, we're not talking about being, you know, being a prepper or anything like that. We're really focused just around how can the technology that you have every day help you in these kinds of situations. And just based on timing, if we look at what happened with Hurricane Milton and Hurricane Helene uh, in North Carolina and Georgia, some of the immediate problems they ran into were connectivity disappeared. You wound up with mass flooding. You wound up with literally homes floating away. So when we think about things like immediate immediacy, and I think that's where I'd like us to start. When we think about the technology that we have with us all the time, how can that help us immediately in those situations? And oh. go ahead. And let's just start with even even before I jump there, you know, there was something that uh, my sister lives in the in North Carolina. No, she was not affected. She she was not in the area, but but she called me, you know, when that was happening. I was checking on her, and we were checking each other, and told me I had never thought that I need to have more cash at home, okay? Because we think on all the digitals and stuff. And one of the things that happened immediately after that is every network was down. Okay, most networks mm -hmm. were down. Uh, she was without internet for for a week or something. So we don't we rely. Okay, I rely on my watch to pay stuff on my credit cards. But if all that went down, okay, it, it's funny because we when we were kids, you know, you get the credit card and you pass it through the machine and then you sign it and mm -hmm. you take it to the bank. Most of the credit cards today are flat. You will not be able to pass them to the machine. Okay, you cannot right. truckle them. So that is something that actually it went to my to my list. I have a checklist of things. You know, if in in the case of when when I used to live in Indiana, uh, you get uh, tornadoes. Here you get the blizzards um, in New Jersey. And I have a checklist. Hey, if something is coming, what do we need? Okay, and do we need water? How much water? And and I went and had cash, not because I I carry some with me, but 
not enough in the case of an mm -hmm. emergency. You know, if it's a two day and I need cash, all the money in the bank will not do any good. The yep. second thing that was cool was see T-Mobile and all these options now of satellite phones. Okay, and the iPhone was one of them. I don't know if there is a Samsung option for that. It was lack of knowledge. I was, I was looking and I did not see one. But as okay. we're talking, I'm going to do another check just to be sure okay. I didn't miss anything. Because I know T-Mobile. Um, the mobile is the news. I I remember having read it, but I know Apple was was talking about that, um, about uh, unlocking the satellite for emergency mm -hmm. ability that they have on the newer phones. I think it's a 15 and up. So people could send text messages at least using the satellites. And, you know, so I was thinking into that. It was very interesting to think, okay, what, what are, if this happened right now to, to us, okay, out of the kids' phones or my phones or even my wife's phone, we don't have any that will communicate that way. So we are really depending until the internet service gets restored via cell phone, uh, 5G, or via hardwire in the house. So that's something that I don't think I have seen as critical as this time around. And maybe because before this technology was available, okay, well, there was no internet, there was no internet, there was no other way. But now there is another way to communicate. And well, it went to my list of considerations for for the next upgrade of, of the phone. Okay, I, I'm not going to upgrade my phone this year. But this is now a reason to maybe upgrade early if we know something ugly is coming to the area I am. Yeah, looking at this article I just found from Android Authority, there <clears throat> they indicate that the best options you have, actually the only options you have, is an iPhone 14 or newer or a Google Pixel 9 currently for um, satellite capability for SOS type notifications. Uh, I know for a fact. So you that have you have then a Google, a Google well, an Android option. I, I you I you, wasn't you do aware. have, and in in a situation where you know you might you have a greater propensity to be without cellular connectivity for an extended period of time. Uh, places like, for example, you know, Ash, Ashbury, um, North Carolina or anything like that, you might want to consider maybe like a satellite enabled hotspot. You know, those capabilities are out there. Um, having it in your own device, unfortunately, is limited. I would love to see more phones with that capability. Uh, but just the ability... And this is something that I recommend to people. Just the ability to send a text message at the most basic um, can be huge. And the thing that works out well with text messaging, especially if you're in a situation where you have not no connectivity, but very spotty or unreliable connectivity, is if you start to if you send a text message and it doesn't go through, it will sit there and wait till it can go through and then it sends. So you have that working to your advantage, um, but it is, it is a difficult thing and you have to be aware of the areas that you're in that you say, okay, I may be without it. This is also one of the downsides we have with the elimination of like 2G and 3G networks, which worked on a larger variety of devices. They worked, they were basically a lot more bulletproof mm -hmm. uh, so that you could leverage those. So, so what what should you do? And you think you were mentioning, you know, that having those things in case there's a situation where you had to go. It's the classic definition of a go bag. What are the the types of technology that you should have in that go bag? Should you have technology? And I think some of the things that I like to include in mine, you're absolutely right. Cash is a big thing. And as we become more and more cashless, it creates a greater and greater problem. Because if you go to, for example, you're in a situation where maybe you need to buy gas. Well, if you have to get a gas can filled and the card readers don't work, you're not getting gas for that generator that you need or your vehicle. So having that backed up, you know, having currency available 
works to your advantage in that circumstance. Other things to include in that bag. I'm I'm a big advocate of a good pair of walkie-talkies. Doesn't have to be a fancy expensive one, but just a cheap pair of walkie-talkies that are in there with good batteries in them because walkie-talkies will always work. They ignore cellular technology because they don't run on it. They're radio frequency. So to be able to have that and be able to stay in communication with members of your family just together are huge. Those are the types of things to include in. But power is one of those things that I think is the, the biggest issue that people run into. Connectivity gets restored a little bit. I hate to say it. I Connectivity gets restored faster than power in many cases where people will mm-hmm. be without power for a week, two weeks. I mean, I've, I've seen it happen just in my area and I'm in southeastern Pennsylvania and they'll be out of power for you know 10 days so how do you how do you mitigate something like that we've talked about before you know you can get generators you can get um battery backup units which are actually much more prevalent now than they used to be uh, where you can have those charged and prepped and ready to go but i think there's a lot of resources that people forget they have available to them now the one thing that i always call out to people is the jump starter blocks that you can get for your car. Um, they're, they're inexpensive. And since we're approaching the holidays, if you're thinking about gifts to give somebody, I mean, it's an eminently practical one. Um, it's a rechargeable battery that can be used to jump start your car if your car dies. Well, that's fine. But most of those have at least one or two USB ports on the outside of them, and they can be used as a battery for charging your devices. And they're a big battery. I mean, they're not designed to be you know, throw in your purse kind of portable, but they also can charge multiple devices for an extended Mm -hmm. period of time. So when you think about the list of things that you have, uh, I suggest to people go through and make a list of all the different batteries that you have that you can charge devices on. And if you know something's coming or, or you get enough of a heads up that something's coming, take a little bit of time and throw those on the chargers and, and bring them up to, to charge level. If it's something where you have very little warning, like a tornado or something like that, it's always good to have a couple of those um, charged and ready to go, but there's only so much you can do in those circumstances. And and the other one, the other thing is, and this is something we invested a year ago or so, is solar power technology. Because as you mentioned, mm. you know, at some point we had the the gas power plant and yes that served a purpose but now the technology for solar power has gone so good that really you can find effective solar power not that expensive to supply that so that way if you go as you were saying those three four days even if you have enough batteries eventually you're going to run out of them Mm -hmm. but the solar power will allow you to get the battery back so um that is important to to consider to add and and as i said many of the things are learning and are personal and depending on you but what are the things that you need to plan about you know i saw a lot of videos of people putting their cars uh, basically wrap them up in i saw that bags okay that was i have never so that before that i recall but i thought wow this is very interesting you go to home depot or whatever is the office and get the bags and wrap the car and seal them well that's a great idea you know and and that's that's where i think people can take that idea and kind of downscale it to something eminently practical for them keep a box of the gallon sized ziploc bags handy Mm -hmm. and just Go to like a Home Depot or Lowe's or or Menards or wherever and get one of those big storage totes, the plastic storage totes. And in that, throw all the supplies you would need to prep for an emergency situation. So you have them there and just tuck it someplace you can. But in that box, put those gallon size Ziploc baggies because all the batteries that you have, all the cables that you have, all the charging, especially the charging blocks, we forget about those things. The ace, the wall warts that are plugged in when that house floods or that, that floor floods, oh, water yeah. gets into those, they're shot. And if your charging block is shot, 
especially if it's for a laptop and it's not like a USB charger, but it's mm -hmm. a dedicated charger, you're screwed. You're done. You can't do anything with that. So to have all that, be able to grab those, throw it into a sealed bag, seal it, throw it into a container and seal it. And then if you have to tape that container shut, or if it's a watertight container, even better. Um, you've just added some extra layers of protection for yourself that really can go a long way in giving you some peace of mind as you're dealing with everything else. Right. And, uh, and the thing that you, you mentioned something again, important, you know, the, all those power cords, you know, think about what are the devices, because you may not care of having the laptop or you may, but it's mm -hmm. important to know, Hey, because if all that you save, is an iPhone charger, well, good luck trying to power <laughs> your laptop. So there is important to make sure that when you prepare for that, you prepare for that the devices that you think you are going to need are going to be able to charge. Do you have the right cables? You know, because if you if you have all the batteries in the world, but all your batteries charge on USB C and all that you have is an USB A, mm -hmm. well, end of the end of the thing. Good luck. So those things I think are very, very important to to think and to consider. Yeah. Um talking about the the backups and that emergency thing we've talked in the past we've talked about backing up your data and, and leveraging the cloud which is really a useful way to make sure that you maintain your data integrity however if you don't have connectivity you don't have access to the cloud therefore you have an issue um, one of the things i do recommend is if you are going to have your critical documents like copies of your insurance paperwork copies of you know personal documents that you need anything like that, that, that could help you get back on your feet, make a copy of those onto a flash drive. Here's the caveat that I will add on top of what we've talked about in the past. Make sure that flash drive has a connector that you can plug into your phone. And the reason why I say that is because if you don't have a laptop available or you don't have a laptop that you you can charge, you can't get to those assets. Then you can't get to those files. But people are so comfortable now with the phone being that extension of them. That's one of the first things they grab and go with. And the upside is most modern phones, most, are water resistant. Uh, I wouldn't say waterproof, but if they resistant. get dunked, they're going to keep working. Which very, very, very few laptop and, laptops and tablets are. So when you have something that's in a, in a crisis situation, the only device that you are likely to be able to interface with that information is your phone. Well, if it's on a U USB stick, which is great, that has a USB-A port on it, <laughs> you're not getting to that information till you get something with that USB-A port. So I have a couple of USB sticks that I use. I actually have a, um, a SanDisk um, extreme ssd that i use that's designed to to be beaten up on and mm. and just but it uses a USB-C connector and i can plug that connector into the bottom of my phone and then access the pdfs that are on there the information that's on there so if i had to talk to an insurance company for example i could pull up the pdf on my phone see my insurance numbers get the information i needed i could look at pictures that i'd taken or anything like that so you really have to think that many steps into the process, not, not even so much how do I get through the initial day, but how do I get through the first three days, the first five days, the first seven, uh, for however long it's going to take. Um, and there's just, it's amazing how many things that we don't think about. Um, as, as with technology being so prevalent, you think about, our smart homes, none of that's going to work. As soon as your connectivity is gone, all that smart home tech is gone. It doesn't, it won't, yeah, it won't function. And odds are it won't be back anytime soon. So you may have it controlling your lights. You may have it controlling heat. You may have it controlling your thermostats. All that's off. So you have to say, okay, how's this going to work without connectivity? And that's, it's a little bit more on the diligence side, but it's a good test. 
at some point, go through and turn off your internet connection. <laughs> Just go turn off your router and see what life is like without it. Yeah. And see see what works My and what doesn't. kids don't like it. I can tell you that much. <laughs> the, I don't remember when, when it happened. It, it was in power. It was the internet, actually. And, and there was an, an outage around where, where we live. I don't remember. It was something like 10 hours. It was a long a long outage, um, nothing related with, with this, but I can tell you my kids were not happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Living by myself. I can, I can pull that stunt and it doesn't freak anybody out, but yeah, that would drop the kids in a heartbeat. So that type of exercise though, can go a long way. And I think that's what we really have to think about. Honestly, if I were to go that far, I would almost think about having possibly like one of those disposable track phones in a box somewhere that I could at least, if my phone were to be totaled, and that's a worst case scenario because we think about our single points of failure in these kinds of emergencies. If your phone is destroyed, that's one thing. Maybe it's just lost. Maybe it gets lost in the, in the shuffle. Well, now what do you do? And how do you make, right. how do you get back to where you were? So I think, um, I think we really have to take that into consideration <laughs> Technology can truly be that double-edged sword. And, you know, there are, there are things that we should do according, you know, paper copies of things, paper notebooks. Um, actually, I have one here. It's a silly little thing. Uh, it's a notebook from a company called Right in the Rain. And what's nice about them is, is the paper is waterproof. Oh, nice. So I can use a pencil and I can write on this and I can, I literally could be standing in the shower and write on it, but it won't get destroyed. So if I were to take this and do something critical, like, oh, I don't know, really important passwords, like we've talked about in the past, or account numbers or anything like that, and put that into a lockbox, well, I would still have it. Even if that lockbox flooded, the information would still be in the little tablet. And I know sometimes, you know, we've talked about this on other podcasts about how some people freak out about writing down your passwords instead of online storage. Well, that's another great example of this. If you have no connectivity, your online password management really doesn't do you a darn bit of good. No, but I think you made a very good point with the gallon Ziploc bags and, and try to waterproof your crap and try to waterproof the papers that are critical, you know, maybe not everything, but some of them. And and I'm on everything, you know, one of the things, and and I can relate, okay, I, I lived many years back in LA, and I remember one day I was doing a demo, okay, in the computer, and there was a little earthquake, okay, and mm -hmm. I continued doing my demo, and in a moment, the client stopped and said, the news are saying that LA just haven't, and I said, oh, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Okay. And we get into that very, very dangerous, dangerous behavior. Okay. And and as I'm saying, guilty of charge. No, no. If this thing shakes, you should have gotten into the stairs and down and figured it out it's not going to be, you know, the warning of the big thing. Mm -hmm. That's not what I did. And same thing in these things. There was a lot of people who choose it's fine. I'm not leaving. I'm okay. Take that into consideration, not for the moment. I understand the aggravation of packing, moving. Okay. I get it. People did it with Katrina and people was very frustrated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Damage or not damage, but think further. Think not only today and the, 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 the annoyances of doing it today, but the risk that you are putting yourself and the others. And that was one thing that, again, guilty of charge, but it was seeing a couple of my friends who were close to the disaster areas and none of them lost major things. But but it was very interesting to, to look at from a different perspective that I think is important that we consider. Yeah, uh, I was just thinking about here, we were talking about, you know, having a go bag. And I know one of the things that I've gotten pushback from people on over the, over the years about this is that, well, I can't afford to have this bag of dedicated tech just sitting around not doing anything. I mean, I need to use this stuff. I need my laptop charger. I need, you know, 
these types of things just can't sit idle in this bag for when you know the world starts to unravel. And my answer to that is actually kind of easy. Fine, then don't put the stuff in the bag. Make a list and put the list in the bag. So that way, when something happens, you can grab the bag, pull that list out, and immediately know these are the things I have to grab. This is a point of action where you should not be not having to go through the analytical thought process of what do I need? What should I get? You should do that when there's no stress. That list will tell you everything. You grab those things on that list and you go. At that point, you have covered your bases. And if you can't keep that bag prepped, that's okay. Just make sure that you can get to the things that are on that list, that you don't have to hunt them down. Um, but that's, that's a slightly different thing. Uh, I was looking... I'm just looking over the list of notes that I put together of different things that have popped into mind. One thing that I think is really good about tech nowadays that we haven't had in the past, uh, but it's really useful. And we started seeing it. I forget. When did we first see it? Facebook started doing it where you would do the check-in that you were okay. Mm -hmm. um, saved, yeah. yeah. I think that's an excellent thing. I like the fact that that's done. I like the fact that there's a central place for you to be able to go and to get information. And that's a great thing for people just to be able to follow with. You know, we bash social media so much and rightfully so in so many cases. But social media also can be that conduit of, of critical information at any moment. And Yes, it can be mid or misinformation too, but you need to just focus on those trusted sources and be able to go to, to those sources and not worry about, you know, the, the other flotsam around it, but just what's happening and what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. You know, don't worry about the why. The why can come later. The what and the how and the when, that's, that's the critical stuff. And you can use those kinds of tools to maintain that connection and keep people up to date and actually find out ways that you can help or be helped. What else comes to mind when you think about the technology that we have available to us and how we can leverage that for these types of disasters that can occur? You know, I go back to my boring checklist. Okay. Right now, if you were in one of those situations or you were close or you were, even if you're just thinking about it, this is the time to start getting that checklist ready. Mm. You know, as I said at the beginning of the show, okay, I shared the story about my sister and the cash. And I went to my checklist, okay? And now my checklist has make sure you have X amount of dollars in cash, okay? Be very specific because remember, your state at that moment is not going to be great. Okay, you are not going to be the sharpest. You're going to be concerned. Hurry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. not the moment to read cash. Okay. Because cash is five bucks. Okay. That's mm -hmm. the moment where you coldly thought about it. No, no, I need to have X. Whatever is X, X will depend. For some people, it will be hundred bucks. From some people, it will be a thousand. Doesn't matter. What mm -hmm. matter is make sure that, you know, I um because I think that is important, you know, and check, you know, I was talking to somebody, a friend of mine who he had a, an, an EV, an electric vehicle. Okay. And he said, you know, it was interesting as we leave Florida, they, they live in St. Pete, as we leave Florida, this is the first time that I saw it has an advantage to have an, an EV, even if I need to charge it. Over because it said on the gas stations on the way out, the lines for putting gas mm -hmm. were awful. Well, the charging stations were mostly available. So it was an interesting change. But also, as he was sharing, okay, and he's happy with his EV. And he said, but I also thought about it. Yes, I took the EV. But if, if the disaster will have hit it earlier or in the way and my car runs out of battery, I'm out of business. So next time I'm taking the gas car instead of the electric vehicle. And it mm -hmm. is very interesting when you start thinking, okay, this happened, this past now we were going to rebuild, but don't forget what we learn out of this experience. Yeah. I, that's one of the things I've, I've been very curious about 
the whole EV versus ice engine in these types of circumstances, because you're right, you know, it is an easier recovery to put gas mm -hmm. in there if it's available. But if it's not available, then you have a challenge. If there's power not available, you can't charge the EV. So I don't think there's an there's a clear winner in that situation no. in, in either case. I haven't heard anything around how the EVs have held up in flooding situations as compared to ICE engines. But I'm um, assuming I'm assuming being all electronic, their holding is not that good. But but that's an assumption. Yeah, I I like I said, I haven't heard anything about it. I'll be very curious to see over time. I think that's one of the things though that can be very useful in situations where let's say for example it's a power outage but it's not a major infrastructure flood so you're just right. you know you're without power for a week well most home ev systems have large storage batteries to act for the charging or i know tesla has that option well you can do something similar if you have an an ice vehicle you just keep your gas can full The gas, mm -hmm. the big old gas can you have for your lawnmower or whatever, keep that full. Right. And that's an extra five gallons that you didn't have before. But, but a lot of it's playing the odds. I think that really is what it comes down to. I mean, you have to look at what are the chances of this happening to you? And if it happens, what, what is it likely to happen? I right. mean, the likelihood of a tornado for my area is very small. The likelihood of hurricane impact is, I would say, moderate you know east coast you know we we get them and we get <laughs> we get wind we get wind events heavily so you, yeah. you know loss of power is a big thing uh snow snow has not been as much of an issue as it has been in the past but it could be at any time but it could be at any time correct yeah and if something doesn't happen very often we tend to get very lackadaisical about it you know we we stop putting into place all the things that we normally do Uh, I remember growing up, always had a few bags of salt sitting around just because we knew it could be icy. Well, we have had over the past years more ice storms than we have had major snowstorms. And an ice storm can be almost worse because it'll take trees down much faster than a snowstorm will. But if you don't have bags of, of, ice, of salt, you can't melt any of that stuff. And that becomes that price gouged commodity that people are searching for so it really becomes a challenge to say okay what what do i need what don't i need and i think this is where we can really take advantage of the technology because we can run the scenarios we can take that idle time and we can go through and make that list and make another list and tweak it and play with it and, and do the research and do the learning and use the technology to teach us what we should and shouldn't be doing and be aware of those things. So I think while I wish that no one ever had to deal with any of this stuff, it's naive to think that would ever be the case. So we always have to be prepared in some ways, way, shape or forms. So, yeah, I think that's a good start. Anything else comes to mind as we I don't have anything prepare. else. I I I hope if you are listening or you know somebody who went through these horrifying things uh, recent with Milton and, and Helene that they are fine and and when things cool down, we learn to we learn to be prepared. You know, yes, you cannot prepare one hundred percent, but you can prepare better and better yeah. with the next one and better with the next one. You know, you were saying it's now here in New Jersey. In the last five years, we have been getting one or two big, big storms. That's it. Well, when I remember my first big storm, okay, was in Indiana. And I look at my neighbor cleaning his driveway. And I'm like, makes no sense. We know it's going to fail. It's going to be 16 to 18 inches of snow it doesn't make sense that it's every two hours he goes and cleans mm -hmm. well, that is the difference between the guy who knows what he's doing and the guy who yes. has no clue yes. <laughs> what he was doing the next morning he had two inches um yep. this person over here had the lord knows how many okay it felt like all the inches in indiana but 
<laughs> and yeah, yeah, I you you laugh. The uh, tractor supply lady laughed when it was a big storm, and I walk into the tractor supply store, and the lady and I said, "Hey, I need a snow uh, shovel." And so on that corner, say, "No, no, 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 I need help. I don't know the difference. I'm just moved from California." And the poor lady looked at me like, oh, poor you. I mean, <laughs> she really looked at me like, yep. she almost hugged me like, yeah, you know. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so sorry for you. But but that's are the things that you learn and that you document. Hey, if we mm -hmm. have a big, if we get here a big storm, more than six inches, I go out at least once because otherwise the next day is unbearable. So those are the things that we need to to learn and we need to figure it out and document it because you will That's, not uh, remember talk talking about the documenting before we close this out that did bring one thing to mind that is a great use for tech documenting the processes around your home and around your world uh, mm -hmm. for example how do you shut off the gas how do you shut off the power how do you shut off the electric um, what do you do where those Even are critical. Going, I'm going one step up, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. What is what I need to? Okay. Because, yeah. okay, do you not only how, what? Okay. What do I have? Because what? If you walk right now out of your house, really, are you going to say, okay, let me think, water check, um, gas check? No, no. In a moment of an emergency, you are not thinking gas check. Okay. You're trying no. to get out. So yeah. that's the moment you need the list that says, close the water, close the gap. Remember, these yeah. are instructions designed. This is a checklist that is designed that anybody in the household can grab the checklist and do it correctly. Don't mm -hmm. think, don't make the mistake of saying, oh, if I put close the gas, I'm going to be the one. No, 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 no. Take the time no. to detail, okay? Because... If you can't for any reason, okay, then it's happened. And it happened to, a, to mm -hmm. a friend of ours, okay? It was not an emergency. They were living, okay? And they needed to, to shut off the gas, shut off the water before they leave. And as they were leaving, okay, uh, my friend uh, put his foot on a on a log and break his, his ankle, okay? Oh, jeez. Now, that normal living... Okay, from the property turn into something completely different. Okay, because his uncle was getting purple and big very, very quick. And now he needed to, to work with his 16 year old and the wife how we're going to shut off all those things. Yeah, he knew the 10 mm -hmm. steps, nobody yeah. else. Okay, but he was completely in mobile because of what happened. Yeah, it's, and, and again, this is that step process that you really think about you use the tech you use the tools you use your favorite note-taking app you go to where you do you document the process you hit print you print it out you fold it up you stick it in a waterproof ziploc baggie and you put it in your in your storage box and you have then covered your bases if you're going to do it or if somebody else has to do it they know where the information is and the information is protected to be able to follow it um we've talked about in, a, in past episodes where you're dealing with the the passing of a loved one that is one of the things that i desperately wish had been done before my father passed away because there were so many things that he had done in his house that nobody else knew how they worked i mean they worked if he did them but that's that kind of prep and as you mentioned the last thing you want to do is be running around in a stress situation trying to remember all the steps necessary to turn the gas off because all of a sudden you smell gas so okay so let's on a happier note we'll close this out looking for oh. for new stuff coming and we're off and running well, then with this follow us where you like to listen to podcasts like us subscribe to us and leave us a review you can also interact with us on Personal Productivity Club. Hey, have you been on these events? What do you have learned with this? What do you know about preparedness that we didn't cover, that we should have covered? But in the meantime, we are Gusto Pinot and Argel Weeks, and see you next time. 
from your favorite device.